They arrested me, put me in prison for two months and six days. Even one word you choose might send you to the jail. The ARD publication uh, was set up uh, in Thailand and the 25 years back because, you know, there was no press freedom at all in our country. <laughs> now we are in my village, at my house, where my parents' house, where I born. So this is where I often come back from Rangoon to here. So I, I mean, especially I don't like uh, a lot in Rangoon. Rangoon is quite crowded, you know, noisy. Mm. So it's quite different from Rangoon to be here. This is a very like a village and quite local and quite very quiet. A lot of tree and good environment, you know, just good to relax. You you seem to know everyone here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all are my relatives. All are my relatives and so yeah. They all know me and so we are I can I mean I can get food from any house because they're all are my relatives. My uncle is over there too. But he's, he also passed away, but his daughter is over there. Whenever I get back to my village, I change my, my village style. Even the speaking too, you know, like that's the Pami speaking and this is my mom speaking. And so I change everything, you know. I, I become like a villager. I came back to uh, Chiang Mai from the United States. At that time, I think the, uh, we get it connected, and then, the, and then um, I asked him and to come and work uh, to the Chiang Mai's office. So that was the first time we, we, we, we started working together. So now, all 10 years um, already. So he's one of our good reporters. He's a non-senior reporter. Burma had, was close to the rest of the world um, just five, six, seven years ago. That is no longer the case. There is investigative journalism happening inside Burma now. There's something to celebrate that despite all the challenges, despite the harassment, the intimidation, despite the killing and imprisonment of journalists, investigative journalism continues to thrive. I would say everywhere is a front line for us here. Uh, even here, if I write something very critical against the military, against someone who is very powerful, I'm crossing the line. They are lying. And then in our country, I always get the sense that there is a line which is invisible. To be on the front line, I am the guy I mean, who like to hang out on the, on the jungle too. So, but to see the dead of the people or the blood, uh, like, it is quite hard, of course. Like, you, you have to drink a lot of alcohol at, at, after that and you fall asleep. It's because uh, you cannot, you know, you, you, your mind, your mind, you feel like, oh, you 
crazy, like, mm. and then and you, you cannot sleep. And so I know that. So when I in the front line, something when I see really bad, so I'm drinking a lot, <laughs> and then I fall asleep. That's all how I dealing with sometimes, you know. Mm. Especially like I can tell you like the case of Arakan, like the, the where they put the Rohingya, you know, and it's really bad. And then whenever I came back from Arakan, I cannot sleep, like one week, and go in like trauma. So I sleep, but I fall like, oh, I cannot sleep very well. I know it, because I saw the people at there, like they had really bad condition. What, you know, how you can help them, whatever. You're like, it's confusing the situation, look really bad. And then you had a bad trauma. In total, there are seven armed groups who are fighting the, with the uh, fighting with the Burmese army. There are Kachin, and then Xi'an, and Palau, and Arakan. If we combine it, like they are like had more than one hundred thousand troops. These people are a minority in this country, and then when I get this information, I can make a story. And then people read it and they, uh, they understand what is going on in Kachin. Balaam, Shan, and Arakan is so, uh, it's quite helpful for them to make a minority voice bigger mm. and making, you know, everywhere, internationally, in Burma, and then people know it. Mm. But look, the Burmese army don't like it. The international community, of course, is following closely what is uh, happening in Raikan uh, and with the Rohingyas. This was unexpected. And I think it's, it's uh, uh, probably the quickest and steepest downfall of any uh, a global uh, human rights icon that has ever been, the world has ever seen. If you talk to somebody who isn't belong to an armed group fighting against the government, then you'll be in trouble. That, that's quite simple. But what if that association, if that ethnic group is signing a national ceasefire agreement? And can you, can you interview them or can you talk to them? Can you take the picture? Yes. But if they don't sign the NCA, the national ceasefire agreement, you will be in trouble. But then, there's a difference. For example, I mean, the Louis, Louis Wen, our senior reporter, was arrested. And uh, before, many reporters uh, were traveling to those areas, frontline areas, whatever. But nobody was, nobody got arrested. But on that trip, they were get arrested. They said I violated their law, but I had my on the, in the January constitution, I can travel as a conflict area. But for me, I had my own right. So I saw two of their men were killed uh, on the ground. And so that's how I took a lot of photos, but they don't like it. And so they worry I'm going to run the story and then they're going to lose the position. So they catch me on the road when I came back. So yeah, they arrested me and my two friends, the journalists who went along with me. So we ain't wanna go. The car my young you got rep train out in the D Lenaji Pit Cat Mood Tani Baya, go to an omu Pidawali. I bought the dog and got your tam two then or through baga Daria Mira Pili Pida she won't know. It called unlawful association is seventy one act. I mean it's not appropriate like to suit me like that. It's I'm the journalist. I had the right to talk to the rebel, I had the right to travel, as I mentioned, in the constitution in this country. Journalist I mean, the army is still on, on control in the country, even we call democracy. I received a phone call from the, uh, from Lawi at the time, and he was calling me 
and from the police custody at the time. And then secretly, if um, uh, the authorities found out he was calling me, he might be in trouble. And then later they dropped me the charges. So this, it's lucky to be out, I mean, but it's still, it's not, it's not suitable to, to suit me like that, to make me like that. But the, the, the reason is, the case of the photo again, but they also wanted to threaten to other journalists. Look, if you travel to the front line again for the other journalists and like me, we will arrest you the next time too. We can send you to prison or whatever, yeah? So when they don't like, they can do it. At the moment, it doesn't look uh, too good. Journalists are being uh, imprisoned, mm -hmm. uh, prosecuted, uh, and ironically, uh, prosecuted based on uh, old uh, colonial laws. So uh, it's a very sad uh, and serious situation. I think a lot of journalists, especially in Western countries, we think our job is so difficult, you know. I mean, our biggest worry really is a lawyer. Um, you know, you never stop to think about journalists that are really putting their lives on the line for the work. And I think that puts what we do in perspective. They arrested us, they don't see any bullet any gun or anything we related or we with the rebel. We are doing our job like at a journalist. We just try to get information. We interview the rebel. That's our job. We don't cooperate or support anything. So they, they cannot arrest any illegal thing. In, in prison, like they also worry about their business. There are many corruption in this country in, in prison. So if they treat me bad, I will write about it. We already crossed the lines many times. One of all, we wrote about him as well, about the press freedom as well. So I even wrote a one story, uh, something like media versus the military. To be honest, condemning the military leadership why they were arrested. They were killing, they were arresting the messengers. So to be honest, we, nobody, nobody knew, you know, nobody knew what would happen until they are released. No, I'm not the only one, but they, there are not many reporters like us who are conflict reporters. So they know who, how many conflict reporters, and then they don't like me a lot, they know. So I know they are targeting. So I have to be careful a lot when I'm traveling. Even one word you choose might send you to the jail. So the word, even choosing the word is very important. Whenever I write, I have to be very, very careful. A lot of my friends like, who are 49 now, like, they don't get a visa. So they, they, this, my friend said, ask them, why, why you don't get the visa? They said, we change the system. So it, it, it, it they block the foreigner, and then they were target to the local reporter. It's very easy to, to target, you know, to, yeah to stop us or arrest us. And then a foreign reporter don't know anything. Who, sorry. So they don't know anything, and you know, what is going on in the country because they are not in this country. So this is their plan in the future, I think. This is what they did in the past. All habit is quite to change. Good evening, everybody. Turkey is a NATO ally. It is an extraordinarily important partner in our fight against ISIL. Uh, so uh, it, it's no secret uh, that there are some trends within Turkey that I've been troubled with. Cumhuriyet gazetesi uh, neredeyse Türkiye Cumhuriyeti ile yaşıt. Ee, yani 90 yıllık filan Türkiye'nin en eski gazetesi zaten. Ee, gazetemiz hükümet tarafından doğrudan zaten tehdit ediliyor. So, 
um, it's now a, a overt um, uh, pressure by the government on a member of Turkish media. Um, and that's just very sad because, um, you know, it's, it's, there seems to be a playbook. We call it the Russian playbook, but, um, you know, it's a playbook on how to capture a state. And one of the first steps is to capture the media. Suriye'ye gittiği tahmin edilen Hatay'da yakalanan MİT tırları içinde ilaç yani tıbbi yardım denilen e, ön üstte ilaç alt, ilaçları çıkarınca altından silah ve mühimmatlar olan görüntüler, görüntülerin olduğu haberi yayınladı manşette. Aynı haberler sadece dosyadaki bu tek haberler nedeniyle devletin gizli kalması gereken belgelerini yayınlamaktan 5 yıl ben ceza aldım. 5 yıl 10 ayda Can Dündar ceza aldı. Bunlar temiz aşamasında Yargıtay'dalar. We never imagined that when he wrote this article this about tracks. Just I I I was celebrate I celebrated him. It's it's very it's a very it was a very good article. You know, we are journalists. This journalism is something like that. So we was shocked when he, he, he, he, we heard that he will be courting, he will be judging. It was the first very strong attack by Erdogan against those two journalists because they published revelations about the delivery of weapons by the Turkish secret services to Islamist groups in northern Syria. Erdem Gül and uh, the Jumoyet editor-in-chief were put in jail. And they were not only put in jail, but they were put in jail because the President Erdogan fi file, filed a personal lawsuit against them, requesting two lifelong jail sentences. Turkey has become the country where most journalists are being jailed. Can you try to describe why? Evet, bu konuda rekor kırıyoruz. Rekor Türkiye'de. Sanırım bir sene önce, yani bundan bir sene önce Rusya'da olabilir birincilik. Ama artık 15 Temmuz sonrası darbe girişimi sonrası ilan edilen olağanüstü hal koşullarında bizim rakamımız 150'yi buldu şu anda. İddianamesi olmaksızın sadece tek bir hakimin... Many of these journalists. Ah, a put in jail because they are seen as supporters for terrorism. They are seen as supporters for for criminals. They are most of them journalists for opposition media outlets. Erdogan, we have to say this is very logical. He says there are only terrorists in jail, no journalists, because journalism for him is terrorism. He doesn't really conceive what is journalism. Bunun nedeni konusunda e, zaten biz olağanüstü hal ilan edilmeden önce de e, geriye doğru kazandığımız düşünce, ifade, örgütlü, şey ifade özgürlüğü konusunda tüm hakların haklarımızın elinden elimizden alındığı bir süreçte geçiyorduk. E, gazetecilik tehlikeli bir iş haline gelmişti Türkiye'de. As, as we have seen in Turkey now, uh, everybody who is not uh, pro Erdogan, they are uh, against Erdogan. E, yaklaşık 30 yıldır tanıyorum. Sarı zaten e, Erdem ilk içeri girdiğinde de onun e, en büyük e, sıkıntısı, en büyük derdi içeride kalmaktan daha çok Dışarıda olan karısı ve iki çocuğuydu. Aslı, bir bak denize. Of course, I'm afraid. Last year, my um, ten years old boy uh, cannot uh, cannot imagine, cannot realize uh, why he is in jail, because he said my uh, my father only writes articles. I don't want my uh, my kids uh, uh, wait for uh, their fathers uh, for a long time when he, he will be in prison because of a, such a nonsense unacceptable things yani e, sonuçta 
bu mücadelede e, bir şeylerin olabileceğini hep düşünmüştür. Ama e, tabii çocuklar ve eşiyle ilgili um, geçmişte bunları çok fazla aklına getirdiğini düşünmüyorum. Ama içeri girdikten sonra bunun acısını çok daha fazla hissettiğini biliyorum. Children uh, really pay the prices for these situations we lived last year. They think that it's it's over now. They don't know anything about this situation because I I cannot uh, I I couldn't say anything. Türkiye'de geldiğimiz noktada haber bir suç unsuru. Bugünlerde e, biraz önce aslında biraz önce söylediğim gibi yani onu anlatayım biraz. Bugünlerde gazeteciler arasında şöyle bir e, ruh hali var. Bu ülkede bu ülkede artık yaşanmaz gidelim. Ben kişisel olarak buna karşı çıkıyorum ve son ana kadar haber yaparak gerçeği yazarak bu ülkenin e, mevcut baskı politikalarına hayır diyenlerinden diyenlerine kalarak destek vermek istiyorum. I mean, you've got to put yourself into it. It's very difficult to put yourself into their lives, um, but you have to try and do that if you can. I mean, and you know, you've got to admire them for what they do. They're really They're doing what I wouldn't do. I don't think I put myself, you know, on the line like that. We will, uh, we will struggle. I, I, I know how to live with my two children. I, I have friends, a lot of uh, good friends here. I never uh, want to go abroad. I never want to live uh, my life in yeah. here. When you look from the perspective from the, this a century from coming up. Uh, This country is never been so stable, but but it is the first time an, an Islamic, Islamic and a Islamic fascist government is now at power, and they use this power very well. Tek haberden ikinci bir e, yargılama açtılar. O o gündür, bugündür devam ediyor. 9 e, Mayıs'ta da e, bu yargılamanın devamı olarak yeni bir e, duruşmam var. O da e, bu haberi yazarak e, silahlı terör örgütüne üye olmaksızın yardım etmek suçlaması. Evet, bu haberi yazarım. E, bu haberi yazmazsam... E, Gazetecilik e, iddiamı, e, gazet, bir de ben gazet, gazetede yönetici konumundayım. E, gazeteci sorumluluğumu çok azaltmış, kendime ilişkin ciddiyetimi ve sorumluluğumu daha düşürmüş olurum. O bakımdan e, hem okurlar hem Türkiye'deki halkın e, bu habere ihtiyacı bakımından bu haberin yazılması gerekiyordu. Ben yazmasaydım, ben yazamamış olurdum. Bu haber yazılırdı. Amazing Azerbaijan. In 2006, I decided to create a journalist organization because as like journalists, I decided for myself for Uh, for this period in Azerbaijan, we don't have any serious uh, journalists 
investi- a journalist organization which has spent time and energy for freedom of expression. We are established this Institute for Reporters Freedom and Safety and uh, all my time I started to spend for these NGOs until 2014. We don't have any other way as uh, to start to create an alternative because if we don't make anything regarding this serious problem, uh, we need to just leave the country. In 2008, when I'm arrested again by the police and tortured in the police station, police beat me with gun back to my neck. After this, I'm again spent two times in two months in hospital. I make escape at 8 August 2014 because government wants to arrest me exactly for the same day. I'm changed my hair color. Uh, from this dark style and changed to the blonde. He put me gray lenses. Uh, I have a beard, white beard. He bring me to the city center after we change his car to the taxi. With taxi, we're going to Old Town to, for which embassy? Because in Old Town, there's lots of embassies around, like Polish, Swiss, Italian, other embassies. And I say, okay, stop there. Stop and go out. I'm going to the st- street and just bring the door. I'm immediately asked for temporary diplomatic protections. When I go inside the embassy and say, for maybe it's possible for just Swiss diplomats evacuate me with his car. But when I'm go Inside, I understand for it's impossible to organize some kind of diplomatic evacuations. And we start to use like negotiations process, which is continued like 10 months. It's not, it doesn't go health free to be in a room uh, for 10 months. It is a struggle, it's a mental struggle. Я видела сына, охранный дефект Гермишем, 2014 году, когда он ушел отсюда. Ну и все, пока у нас встречи не было. Не было. Да, очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень скучаю. Очень job and uh, which is even a little bit different work from outside of Azerbaijan. Your little brother is Meman and he uh, he was jailed and imprisoned uh, and he will not be re- released until the next two years. What did he do? My brother started to use social media to blame corrupted officials with some kind of new satirical style. He created bigger satirical online magazine, Sanjak. And before presidential election, he already have uh, 100,000 followers. In 2014, now he have 335,000 followers. Mm. And it looks like 30% of all Facebook users, his followers. In Instagram, we have also 160,000. It's, again, 25% from all Instagram users read his posts. Yani, təsəvvür edirsiniz, millet vəkili olasan, milli məclisdə oturasan, məmur olasan, milyonların ola və sən 
fəhlələrin pulunu kəsəsən. Yəni, adam nə qədər vicdansız olmalıdır ki, fəhlələrin pulunu kəsəsən. And he used this two important and most popular tools in Azerbaijan to blame this high-level officials, including president, including ministers. That was a hit. It was thousands of retweets, thousands of likes on Facebook, and it gave a negative image of society. If this is how the Azerbaijani society treats its weakest, is this who we want to be? And he didn't have to say much more, right? Some people send it him leaks from these houses, like whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. And he shared these materials and said, look, guys, <laughs> what I'm finding. And after this, he is arrested by the police, beaten by the police. He's kidnapped, he's not arrested. We search him 24 hours later, we know for he's in the police station. Azerbaijan is a very nice country, but that's not the case of its regime. Very nice propaganda. Because in fact, this regime is totally crazy. At least nine journalists are in jail in this country just for doing their job. And the main opposition newspaper, they were step by step reduced, reduced to almost nothing. You don't have to do human rights work to get the message of the people out. And, and I think uh, the Hussein brothers were so disturbing because what they were aiming at, or what they're still aiming at, although one is in prison, one is in Switzerland, but what they're still aiming at is to get the message of the people out. Uh, Mülki geyimli polis nəfərləri, yəni Mehman özü bu barədə bildirmişdi. Bayra burada Bakı şəhərinin mərkəzində onu yerə yıxıblar və sonra da polis maşınında aparıblar. Başına torba keçirdiblər, gözlərini bağlayıblar, ağzını bağlayıblar və sonra da polis maşına qoyub, haradasa bir saat şəhərə gəzdir. Məni harası aparırlar, bilməm ara, amma mən hiss edədim ki, mənim burnumdan qan axır. Qan axırında mən nəfəs alan bilmirdim maşında. Çünki mənim ağzımı yummuşdur, gözümü bağlamışdur. Overnight he was beaten up. He had blood all over his shirt. Um, what, what more indication? Did he, did he go and bang his head against the wall? That's not his style. He had blood all over his shirt. He was obviously beaten. Mehman, sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Mehman, sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Sen nasıl deyirdiler? Bu kimi tədbirlərə məruz qalmayıb, məsələtə cəlb olunmayıb, heç ilə nəzər alınmadı və bu iki il azalıqdan məhrum etmə bu gənc barəsində dəyişdirilmədən qüvvəsində saxlandı. Поэтому я радуюсь, когда он кушает. Сама я... Мне этого ничего не надо. Мне надо, чтобы он кушал. Я радовалась дома, знала, что как будто бы он рядом недалеко или рядом со мной. Поэтому, когда есть возможность, я всегда ему покупаю то, что... Ну так, ерунда, но носим. И на Азербайджане prison, you every day, like, systematically, like, tortured. Yeah, you have everyday violation of your rights. Sırf burada cesaretli olmak ya da düşmür. Aynı zamanda hepsi kana artık bizim için adilleşir. Yani hesabiliriz ki bu bir bayağı dediğim gibi tenkitçi jurnalistik ise jurnalistik ile meşgulsansa senin yolun hepsi kanadan geçmeli. Ona göre göz almır. Görüş görüştüğümüz ilk anda adeten birbirimizi gocakla böpürük ve bir de sağ olasın da. 
Düzü ilk evvel, yəni zon adlandırdığımız büyük əraziyə keçirilməmişdən əvvəl mehman təccidxanadaydı, şübədən təccidxanasında və onunla demək olar ki, qətiyyən əlaqə saxlaya bilmirdi. We are looking at a highly unequal distribution of wealth in the world. We're looking at the emergence of an oligarch class that considers people like cattle, driving them in different directions and milking them in different ways. Okay, there's a tidal wave of corruption coming across the world as aspiring politicians or businessmen in other countries model themselves on places like Azerbaijan. When Emin, when he had to then go into hiding and leave the country, the chairperson who succeeded him was actually killed. Uh, the fact that after that, the next chairperson, his brother, Mehman Husaynov, was arrested really shows a, uh, a willingness to punish that family. Uh, we're getting beat up, we're getting arrested, we're getting imprisoned, we're getting uh, sued in court for bogus charges. Uh, oligarchs are trying to, to uh, derail our publications and, and investigations. Crime is not the problem in the future, it's corruption. So if you're a bad person and you want to do something, what do you do? You become a politician. You know, you, you look to capture states. You know, so once you, the, the state becomes actually the, the greatest fear in your life. what we have similar is also living five years in exile uh, but after as I understand also G able to came to the ruling floor is able to return he, he told me about like he does not have an office in his country for you know where to organize the news or where his reporters are based. So most of his reporters are underground and secretly, and so how they got the information, sending it out from the country. So we had a quiet experience when I stayed in Thailand as an exile journalist. For me, it's quite useful. And I met with a lot of professionals from uh, investigative reporting environment. Like uh, this morning when we we we at the room, like there's the one lady who talking about Mexico. It's so scary, like to see like how many of her friends. She said like 111 of a journalists were here in the country. So when I feel I, I heard about it, I feel like shocked. We are not like um, soldiers. Our war is it continued produce our reporting and to improve these materials, to share these materials with uh, peoples in country and outside and change opinion, uh, develop critical mind. So how, how long it will take to be a citizen? It's Sorry. after 10 years. After 10 years? It's a, Switzerland have longer uh, naturalization process compared with all states. Now I'm like stateless person, but I'm still think like for I'm Azerbaijani. Ben kişisel olarak geldiğimiz hani ortasındayız dediğimiz aşama itibariyle çok umutluyum. Ee, Türkiye'de gazetecilik düşünce, ifade, özgürlüğü genişleyecek. When a country, a state like Turkey or another state like uh, Azerbaijan, the, the, they, when they make up their mind to, to turn off uh, press freedom, there's very little we can do from, the, from outside. Turkey is an interesting case because it really, um, I think there's a 10-year rule that when people have been in, in charge of a country for 10 years, they start going nuts. Uh, daha fazla dibe doğru gidemeyiz. Çünkü, çünkü Türkiye'de, Türkiye'nin potansiyeli bakımından dibi gördük. Bundan sonra e, suyun üstüne çıkma zamanı, Türkiye'de gazeteciliğin e, oksijeni tekrar 
sağlanacak. Ben buna inanıyorum. You know, Azerbaijan can imprison its journalists. It can try and close off its borders. Ultimately, it can't close off its information. And for Azerbaijan, I mean, they are doing fine. They're bribing politicians in the Council of Europe, and uh, they are bribing uh, uh, UN organizations. The bastards, they have a tendency to learn from the bastards. So they are copying each other's uh, oppressive measures. We need to reach out more to our colleagues, especially uh, in places like Turkey. We will have to live with critical, good, quality journalism working under threats. So we need to be much better at identifying who are the courageous, uh, um, um, thorough investigative reporters out there. We have a lot of people who don't want the truth to come out. In North America and in Europe, investigative journalists can go around their work freely. In many countries, that is not the case. Investigative journalists are in prison, they're killed, they're banned. We are the nail that sticks up, um, and that nail attracts a lot of hammers. Yani burada yargılanan e, bilmem ne terör örgütü ya da başka bir şey değildir arkadaşlar. Burada yargılanan gazeteciliktir. Gazetecilik suç değildir. 